Welcome back to the Homestory Cup 9 North America Qualifiers. This is a best of three. And yeah, we're getting pretty close to the final rounds, guys. Spotted here in the top left corner of the map from Complexity Sound Blaster, the Red Zerg player, Hindralisk. People thinking he's out. No, it's a best of three, not a best of one. Still here, still in this game, spotting the top right corner. He is his own independent man. Don't need no woman. It is Destiny. Or no black man. Or, I screwed that up. It was supposed to be a bad joke. Either way, Destiny's been independent for God knows how long and rather successful uh, hand in hand with this. Now, this was not exactly the best first game for him, but if we could give credit where credit's due, guys, he held off a very awkward 10 pull with a, a defense that was definitely not well prepared for it, and he led himself into the mid game. Going for the Swarm host seems like an odd choice, but off of a gold base and Mutalisks, all from the fear of aggression from Roaches, he still handled that really well. The problem was, he just really wasn't ready for Hangelisks' attack, and the Swarm host worked out, I think, a little bit better than anyone had anticipated. Again, he did catch a lot of those Mutalisks down towards the south that took away so much from that Swarm host attack. I gotta be honest though, guys, had things gone perfectly in, the for in, in Destiny's favor, I could have very easily seen him forcing out, if not a long game, a victory out of that first match. That being said, I don't want to give him too much credit. He's got to earn the second game if he really wants the victory because Hendrilis is a very talented player who will not be easy to take down. But as far as the brackets go, again, you can type exclamation mark brackets if you're live in the Twitch chat to see what's going on. The winner of this series goes on to fight the man you guys have been begging for for the last, the entirety of this whole tournament. Pulse is waiting. So regardless of whether Hendrilis wins or Destiny wins, you will finally get some Pult and we will follow them to that semifinals match. On the lower half of the bracket, we still see players like Fog and Violet advancing quite nicely as well. I think everybody here is anticipating and having their fingers crossed for a Violet versus Pult finals. But if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I think the only other TVZ I would want to see would be Hendrilis versus QXC, depending on how this plays out. Regardless, we'll keep an eye on the brackets and keep you all up to date for those of you that don't check them frequently. Or I guess me, we, I? Ah, it's so weird solo casting. Uh, anyway, Hengelisk taking a natural base. Destiny also taking his hatchery down here. Nothing too crazy aside from the gas coming out of Hengelisk. So, by going for the gas before pool, this again is going to get you that earlier speed. It's going to get units on the map a little bit quicker. But, you know, Zerg Legs can be shut down with Bane Langs and with proper control. Good SimCity and Micro from Queens. So I, uh, I don't know, this, uh, for him just to go aggressive like this, it's not a bad move. I mean, it proved to be worthwhile for him last game, but it's not, it's not something that you want to do. It, it's one of those kind of high risk, decent reward, like even, I would sometimes say low reward scenarios. There's the odd chance you could just straight up win, of course, but, uh, yeah, this is, uh, we'll see what ends up happening. Destiny does get across the map to scout this time, so he was pretty hardcore denied last game. Uh, but these links will not make it out of this base alive if you're, you know, Queen's getting on top of this. You might die for a drone. You sometimes see people do that, but, uh, actually, let's bring around the Rosie. Oh my god, is he really gonna get out of the base alive? No, this Queen. Double kill, double kill. There you go. First blood. I wish I had a double kill sound effect, uh, preloaded into this. <laughs> Ooh, but the Bane Nest is going to change this up a little bit. So I was going to talk about how Hengelisk, if he just goes for straight links again, might not be able to tag this out. But he and he and Destiny as well both will have Bane links. And if we're going to be honest, guys, it doesn't matter if it's Korean versus Korean, European versus European, or North American versus North American. Bane links versus Bane links and Zerglings versus Zerglings are some of the most fun and intense things to look at. Now, coming into this, I don't know who's going to have the better control for this. I've seen Hengelisk make some really stupid mistakes with Zerg Banelings in the past. No disrespect to him, but he is guilty of it. Uh, but I think everybody has. There's no one who's got that absolute perfect Baneling control. There's not a single player in StarCraft 2 that I think of and say, like, he is in he or she is infallible and has never screwed up with Banelings once. So whether there's some accidents, whether there's some super Gosu micro, we'll have to wait and see. But Hengelisk actually may not end up going too heavily with the Banelings. I think these are actually going to be defensive as he's going faster for that layer tech. Now, I'm waiting to see the extra gas is thrown down, but with only one gas being taken, I can't imagine this is going to be for... Oh, there we go. It will actually be Mutalisks on Merry-Go-Round. This is not a bad choice. I think a lot of people look at this map too and they think like, okay, air is bad, just bottom line. There's these, these closed air blockers, you can't physically fly around a lot of the map and you get stuck in these bases so spore crawlers are almost always in range of you. But it's the middle of the map that really matters. You fly over top of the terrain, you fly past the Banelings, you fly through the Watchtower. I mean, Mutalists are not a bad choice at all, and we'll see how he can utilize them here. Destiny's own layer is on the way, and if he is going to plan to go Mutalist, he will certainly come out behind. And that's where this gets really scary. When you start Mutalisk versus Mutalisk, guys, it doesn't matter whether it's 5 Mutalisk versus 4, 11 versus 12, or 25 versus 26. 
the bottom line is, if you've got more Mutalisks, you're going to win the fight. And for Destiny to start off a little bit behind... Ooh, actually, that was a really good Bailey connect on Hendro, sorry. Just like one random Bailey on the middle of the map. If you start off behind, it's going to be rough. Now, he goes for his third a little bit earlier, and this may end up paying out, uh, playing out more to his favor, but... Ugh, this is never fun to, to try and gauge your opponent's Mutalisks. If there was some easy way in StarCraft 2 to count and be like, okay, you've got exactly 18 Mutalisks, then you know precisely how to react. But Banelings are coming out, and 18 more Zerglings are on the way here for Hengelisk. He's going to probably try and bait out a couple of these Banelings hits with one Zergling, if he does it perfectly. Uh, but there's a Queen he's got to worry about, and that Overlord may end up dying. Middle of the map controlled by Destiny 2. He's got the Watchtower, he's got the Overlord. So, I mean, he sees all this coming. He knows what's, what's on the way. And if he's going to skip past the Mutalisks... No, okay, he's going to go for a Spire. I was going to say, he needs to slow that down immediately. But uh, he's going to need some pretty perfect control here with these Banelings. Unfortunately, they're not going to be that absolutely perfect uh, control. So, uh, Hendro spends so much time running circles around the Banelings, the Queen ends up acting like a turret and targeting down a lot of the Zerglings. So, uh, retains one of his Banelings, holds off the aggression of Hendralisk, and has his third that's going to complete. Now, as, for, as far as securing the mid-game goes, this is where it comes down quite differently. If you are behind in Mutalisks and your opponent's not willing to fight, like let's say either Hendrus or Destin are the ones just kind of keeping the Mutalisks more on the passive kill overlords not really fight stance, then the best way to get ahead is instead of killing a Mutalisk to get that one extra Mutalisk, you instead get the economy for it through these extra extractors. If Destiny can tear down Hendrus' third or vice versa, that's a big way to snowball fast in the Mutal Wars. But I think both ways at this point have finally uh, discovered that it will be Mutalisks. I believe Destiny just got a big scout off of the base. Ooh, he actually missed the Spire. Uh, he'll see the Beatles actually physically popping out now as he moves in to kill the over. Uh, okay, awkward. Uh, but Hendrisk also gets a, a full drive by, so sees the spire completing fully and entirely with that overseer. But he's gonna know he's ahead of Beatles count to here to start. Destiny's got 800 gas banked up, so eight Beatles will be coming out right away. But he's gotta he's gotta really play the defensive game. Hendrisk has got those early extractors coming down. He's got a better base saturation, and he's already got Beatlesks in play. Uh, he's also got plus one carapace on the way. This is an upgrade that you can argue whether it's good versus bad. Destiny's also going for the 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 uh, centrifugal hooks, so his banelings will move a little bit faster. But if we're gonna be honest, guys, banelings speed becomes a little bit irrelevant if they're sniped off by the mutalis before they can even get involved with the fight. Uh, up here towards the north, though, ooh, Destiny's got nothing at home. Well, wait, a couple of banelings are waiting at the top of the cliff. One good hit goes off, two good hits go off, and he really minimizes the damage he's done. Uh, with a drone pull on this queen, he will actually hold his defenses here in the main pretty solidly. Good control there out of Destiny on those banelings. Uh, of course, those are manual detonations, not, uh, not E moves by any means. Yeah, but, uh, yikes. Uh, Sport Clogs are down, and Hindrance isn't going to be able to get some free damage. Now, to talk about the Carapace upgrades while we're waiting, guys, a big part of the Carapace upgrade, why it influences Mutalisk fights so much more than the, the weapon upgrades does, is because the Carapace reduces the bounce damage as well from those Glaive Worms. Not just the initial hit, but also each Glaive Worm bounce. So the Mutalisks with that plus one weapons, you think, well, what's the difference? You know, if one's got armor, one's got armor, damage, it, it, it cancels out. But it's not the case, because sometimes Glaive Worms will bounce off and they'll hit the Zerglings, sometimes Glaive Worms will bounce off and hit the Overlords, whatever's nearby. For Destiny right now, he has to take a defensive stance. This kind of sucks for him, and it's a reality that he's faced with. He's got an infestation pit on the way, and I don't think this will be for the swarm hosts, but instead for the fungal growths. Because again, the only the only really transition you do out of Mutalisks typically ends up being roaches, but you've got to deal with the Mutalisks first, and he knows he doesn't have the capability of doing that. With 20, 20 Mutalisks over 10, double the supply, Destiny simply cannot fight away from the spore crawlers or it's suicide. But you look at this, guys, and you think, wow, Hendrix is so far ahead. He's just going to auto win this game, no problemo. But that's not necessarily the case. I've seen great players throw from leads, uh, even better than this. I referenced it about a million times on my cast. I'll do it again. We watched Scarlet, I believe, versus Kane it was on, I want to say Belshire. I could never remember. It was so long ago at this point. But it's for like one of the IEMs or Red Bulls or something. And. And she had the Mutalisks, she won the war, but Kane managed to get a fungal growth on top of Spore Crawlers and killed all the Mutalisks and won the game. So, uh, it's not an automatic win or lose to have the Mutalisks count where it is, but you have to control it properly as well. Now, unfortunately, this base is actually fully compromised. A couple of roaches do come in here. Pathogen glands are on the way, but even the Mutalisks are a little bit scared to respond, knowing that Hentralisks are right outside the base. And these Mutalisks can certainly dive on top of one of the Spore Crawlers. It goes down pretty quick, and I don't think he lost a single Mutalisk for it. Mm, the numbers are looking pretty rough still. 27 versus 19. Some bailings on the ground here for Hengelisk as well. So Zerglings from Destiny can't exactly be flooded upon, but he's got those pathogen glands about to complete. He's got Infestors timed out with this pretty perfectly. Oh, but he's got to take a decent fight. Oh, Transfuse actually gets to let him try and hit a couple more times, but again, the third base under attack, and there's nothing here to hold it. The Zerglings are pulled to the natural. Drones are being peeled off here at the, at the third. 
And while there's nothing going on in the main, uh, static defenses are being reestablished for Destiny right now. Both spine cars and spore cars are coming down because of the constant zergling harass underneath this. But again, it's this flock of mutilus that's so scary. Up to 30, and if he can get a good fungal growth or two, maybe he can turn this around. But it ha it has to be on top of a spore crawler. Like, the the necessity of what you need for this fungal growth to work is not simply hitting the mutilisks with it. It's going to take a gajillion... Uh, there we go. Like, a gajillion fungal growth to actually kill the mutilisks through its damage alone. The regeneration on the mutilisks is absurd. But if you can do it on top of a spore crawler, if you can segment out half the mutilisks and force a fight, that's how you can take a victory. Destiny still sitting on 21 mutilisks, Hendrilisk on 33. The rest of the numbers in play are almost irrelevant. Uh, the worker counts are also kind of even, but Hendrilisk has taken a fourth while this goes on. He's got map control. He's had map control for a majority of this game. And a big, a big part of that is, again, Destiny not able to really move away. Everything's been constantly attacked. Third base, natural base. Hendrilisk has been all over the map, multiple locations, all at the same time. His own infestation pit is coming out, and probably his own fungal growths. But there's always that itch for the swarm host. Uh, lots of circles do get by once again, and Destiny's certainly going to have to start remaking some queens. But with some spine cars down for Static D, he might just be able to hold this off. However, not be distracted from this. Oh, he is distracted from it. The Bailings get into the middle line, and oh my god, the drone line gets shredded. As those Bailings, it looks like a waste, but the workers killed at this point. It's 44 drones versus 74. The 21 that have gotten down have certainly helped influence that, combined with the fact that Hendrix has a comfortable fourth. This is looking worse and worse for Destiny. The one advantage he's really had was this fungal growth. If he had landed that on the Bailings, guys. The fungal damage alone would have killed them, combined with the crippling anti-movement that it provides with it. But Hendrilsk has got his own static defense coming up. He's starting to get worried about counterattacks. He's playing it really safe, and being up one at the moment, it, it, this, is, this is really his series to lose. Not just his game, but his series to lose. The longer he sits back to you, the better chance Destiny has to catch up. Pre-spreading his mutilisks, though, trying to avoid the fungal growth. He knows a fight is probably coming sometime soon and doesn't want to get caught off guard by for just one second looking away. I love that pre-spread out of Hendrilisk. It's a lot of thought that goes into this. Uh, infested Terrans would be a nice thing to have, but something Destiny can't really afford, even though he's got a lot of energy for it. Still in the middle of the map. Very dangerous to be moving with the mutilisks like this because you don't know the location of Hendrilisks. Uh, Ling run by over here did get kind of caught off guard. Destiny finds himself in a very awkward situation. So many mutilists to fly through to get to safety. If he can, if he can drag these, if he could have dragged Hendrilisks into the fungal growth, that would have been fantastic. Before there weren't enough energy for enough fungals to kill every single mutilisk. Now there are. Ling's run by once again though, and spine crawlers, while well, a decent form of defense, will not stop Zerglings from winning. Uh, an eight, <laughs> a good hold position once again on the queen. I love this defensive move he keeps making, but Hendrilisk also goes for the hold position. So the Zerglings start picking off these drones, and again, Destiny has been lacking in drone count. He's been down a whole base to his opponent. He's trying to take a fourth right now, and this is a really ballsy move but it's one he kind of has to make because if he sits on three bases for too much longer he might as well just forfeit and I think he knows that as well so doing what he can to stay in this the Zergling run bys have been a little too real and we even had some Banelings sneak off down here I don't know how long those have been sitting there for but two are going to walk forward and these drones oh these drones are so clumped Destiny Sob is coming though and he splits not too bad holds off the first two might think there's nothing else Spine Callers are doing a fantastic job of weeding out these Zerglings, by the way. Like, these Spine Callers don't exactly have 20 kills each, but they've been really doing a good job of holding. Uh, looks like the Banelings in the main did take down a couple more workers, but do keep in mind, guys, that was about 25, 21 before anyway, so up to 29 dead. And more Banelings rolling in here. Spine Caller does go down. He gets a decent connect to some of those drones. Scumbag uh, Infestor could have fungled that. <laughs> but again, it's it's a lot about keeping an eye on uh, like 19 places at separate times on the map. And I think Destiny knows that this is a really hard fight to take. But the Mule Scout is evened out pretty heavily. 36 to 31. Both players have 1-1 one, one upgrades. And while Hendrix is about to get the upgrade advantage through weapon damage, Destiny certainly has the fungal growth advantage. He's got so many more Infestors than his opponent. 7 versus 12. But the Banelings are going to force out a lot of awkward uh, fungal growths, not to mention Hendrilisk again. He's never really attacked from just one angle. Every time he attacks the third, there's about 20 links that run through the natural and vice versa. But that's a, oh, that's a lot of Banelings. A good fungal growth goes on for Destiny. And a lot of these Banelings get sniped off before they get any real damage out. Infestors are still not safe as there's no burrow running away from this, but the Mulus will cover the hold. More Banelings get fungal growth and Hendrilisk just throws away so much army supply. Now, granted, he's been on four bases for a long time, so he's got a bit of money to work with. He's got a bank that's been accrued this whole time. He was able to afford those losses. But this is when you start worrying about if you throw too many of those away, that's when you start really throwing the game. Because Destiny, what did he trade there? Energy. 
a couple of investors. I think a spine crawler may have even gone down, but realistically, not a lot. And that's a hell of a lot more banlings coming in. Fungal growths are going to be needed for so many different parts of this army. If he had only picked up the ramp, he would know just how necess necessary this was. Oh, wait, this came in blind? I didn't even know this came in blind. Awkward is as awkward does, though. A couple lings will kill the infest in Terran, so he wins the infested Terran fight. Uh, fungal growth goes down on top of the mutals. It is good. Hendrix gets all of his mutals. Well, not all, but a good chunk of his mutals. Fungal growth upon. Banlings are coming in from the side, but there's no follow up. But we see infestors. Fungal growth. Destiny's mutalist. Both players are completely covered in fungals, but his destiny just doesn't have the numbers to take that fight. Mutalists are so busy that they can't guard the infestors. Awkward is as awkward does. Fungal still coming out left and right. Nobody with burrow. Nobody to hide. But even if he could, fungal re uh, th reveals burrowed units. A couple more fungals get thrown out here, and we just see a barf fest of green across the map. Queen up here on the top is going to go down to Destiny. Ah, you know what? Those fungals are good. I got to give it to him. But for Hentulus, because it felt just like we're a little too more. He's got the brute force. He's got the raw numbers. And no matter how good your micro is, <laughs> nothing's going to beat numbers and upgrades. A couple of bailing hits go off, and once again, the main in trouble. This queen has been a, like the veteran of like nine wars at this point. Uh, certainly run by here towards the natural as well. Fungal growths are just being used very liberally. This is a little bit scary, though. Three bailings managed to sneak past everything. I don't think Destiny caught this. Look at all these drones stacked up on one mineral patch. Zerglings running by again. Another fungal growth goes off, but this only takes the Zerglings down to almost dead, not completely dead. So a second fungal is used. And Destiny's had a lot of success with these fungals. He's been able to get some impossible ones, that's for sure, this game. But as we saw, those drones. Oh, God. 55 workers dead now. Those three banlings were fantastic. And uh, Destiny's attacking his own spawny pool. Destiny's attacking his own spawny pool. Misclick of the century. He kills his own spawny pool, which means no more zerglings. No more banlings. And he's only going to have infestors and mutalisks. Does he even realize he just misclicked his own spawny pool? Well, that has to be a mistake. There's no... Oh. Okay, back at the top base, we've got a spine crawler down, but the drones did not get the surround off in time. Mutals are swooping on in to try and defend. The unit counting station right now, though, is 44 mutals over 32. Still not able to get a lead, despite what goes on in this game. This base under attack once again, and Destiny just can't catch a break. Hendralisk is relentless, if nothing else. Uh, honestly, some infested Terrans may even be a good choice at this point, but he's saving those fungals, trying to land that money shot on those mutalists. He doesn't have a lot left, but Destiny certainly does. Splits up his mutas though. Not gonna take too much damage from this. There's no there's but one spore crawler remaining. Two spore crawlers, right? This one's almost dead. There's not a lot that can fight this army head on, even if he manages to land that money fungal, which is so scary. And let's not forget this hatchery is so close to dead that even Banelings just thrown into it may end up killing it. But Hendralisk, again, he's he's been maxed out for a long time. He's got an actual bank existing for him. Those fungal growths don't go off because the infestors get sniped. Destiny's own fungals don't go off because the infestors are too scared to get sniped. He needs to get these units in the fight, but he's a little bit worried about what's around. Both players have a lot of fungal growths and a lot of infestors. I think infested Terrans might be better at this point. Honestly, some of those coming down, but in fungal growths go now left and right from Destiny's uh, unfortunately fungal infestors, infestors himself. Infested Terrans do come down, and will the Mutalists be able to carry this through with the, the infested Terran support? Looks like most of the infested Terrans actually go down pretty darn quick, but with a good handful of them still alive, he's starting to win the Mutalist War. 23 to 13, Destiny has started to turn this game around for the first time in 26 minutes. He's going to win the Mutalist War and San Angeles packing. 10 more Mutalists are on the way, but a discernible lead in the favor of our Blue Zerg player. 19 Mutalists with patience and infestors and incredible defense around this third. He has finally found a way back into this game. But make no mistake, guys, he hasn't won this yet. Hendra still has his fourth base so heavily fortified. A fifth base has just recently been made. And Destiny's in a good spot, but just as Hendralisk kind of threw that fight away, Destiny could equally make the same mistake. We've got Hydralisks on the way, and Destiny lost his spawning pool. He never rebuilt it. The oh, actually, he did rebuild it. I take that back. Sorry. Who? <laughs> Yeah, the one big thing that's going to deal with these, these Hydralisks so well, it's not Fungal Growths. It's not going to be the Mutalisks. It's going to be Banelings rolling right into them because they're not going to have any support from Roaches. But the problem and the scary thing is, if, 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 in this big if, the Fungal Growths go down, the Banelings are completely worthless. So it's a really hard decision to make investment-wise, but if you come in from multiple angles, there's not going to be enough Infestors. There's not going to be enough Fungal Growths. But okay, Infested Terran's coming down on top of the front lines. Fungal Gross on top of Destiny's own Mutalist. He may have secured that lead early on, but will it be enough to hold the lines? Hydralis do way too much damage. Good game is going to be called. Good luck is called. And Hendralisk will win the series 2-0. Destiny sadly will be knocked out. And we will see Hendralisk versus Pulse in the next round.